This is a circuit breaker. It is an automatic electrical switch that protects circuits from damage as a result of high current, that is too much current. This too much current is caused by either short circuit or overload. Now, in a PV system, when sizing a breaker between your solar panel and your charge controller or your hybrid inverter, this is the solar panel down to the SCC, which is the solar charge controller. Then we have our battery here. We have the positive and the negative. Then we have our inverter. This is the DC side and this is the AC side of the inverter. Then here we have our loads. Now, when sizing a breaker, there are a few factors you need to consider or you need to take into consideration. Please let me know where you are watching from. Now, the first factor is the current. This is the normal operating current of the circuits. We have from the solar panels, you know, when you expose the solar panels to the sun, they will start generating uh, current and voltage in DC form. So the normal operating current of the circuit is what you take into consideration when you want to choose the size of breaker between the solar panel and the charge controller. You install a breaker here. Between the solar charge controller and the battery, you will have a breaker. Between the battery and the inverter, you also install a breaker. Between your inverter and your load, you also have a breaker. So it is the current, the normal operating current from the solar panel to the charge controller, from the charge controller to the battery, from the battery to the inverter, what the inverter will be taking or what the inverter will be using to charge the battery if you are using a hybrid inverter and what um, the inverter is using to power your loads. Here now we are talking of AC. So it is the current that is flowing through them, this, um, uh, uh, the circuit that you will use in sizing or choosing the size of breaker. Then number two, we have a safety factor. We need to apply a safety factor. There we know that uh, when choosing a breaker or a cable, we apply a safety factor of 1.25. But when sizing a PV, or a PV system, rather, you have to take into consideration the PV source, the PV side of the system, and the inverter side of the system. When you are sizing a breaker or a fuse or a cable between the solar panel and the charge controller or the hybrid inverter, you will take this 1.25 multiplied by the normal operating current of the circuit. Then you need to multiply this another, um, take into consideration another safety factor of 1.25. So you have 1.25 multiplied by another 1.25. This will give us 1.56. So when you are sizing a breaker, a fuse or a cable between the solar panel and the solar charge controller, the safety factor you use is 1.56. Why do we have another 1.56? We have another 1.56 because of irradiance. Now, during the day, we know that um, the irradiance can increase or can rise above 1,000 watts per square meter. The solar panels we have, the data that we have there, they are based on standard test conditions, STC, at 1,000 watts per square meter of irradiance. Now, what if the irradiance increase above 1,000 watts per square meter? the current will also increase. Like I told you in my last video, that irradiance is, uh, the current is being affected by irradiance. If there is an increase in irradiance, the current will increase. If there's a decrease in irradiance, the current will also decrease. Now, solar panels have the tendency to generate more than their rated capacity if the irradiance exceeds 1,000 watts. Now, I have a 600 watt solar panel and this 600 watt solar panel during the day it's um during the day there are some time that uh let me look at the parameters of the solar panel now the short circuit current of this 600 watt solar panel that i have is 18.47 amps 18.47 amps but most times when uh, the sun is at its peak 
this solar panel, if you check the short circuit current, is 23.6 amps. This is what most times I have if I'm checking the short circuit current, 23.6 amps. You can see that it has exceeded the rated value of the solar panel, which is 18.47. Then when it is generating uh, from my meter, most times these are the values I have, 631 watts. This is a 600 watt solar panel, but mind you, this is not constant. It is not steady. It fluctuates. Most times it just lasts for three minutes, at times five minutes, just few minutes and it will reduce. So it is not steady. That is why when you are sizing solar panels, you don't use the, 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 sorry, you need to apply what we call the performance ratio. So that, um, because we know that solar panels, a 600 watt solar panel cannot generate 600 watt complete from morning till evening, from 8, maybe 8 to maybe 4 p.m. It cannot give you 600 watt constantly uh, from morning to evening. It is, it is impossible. So it fluctuates. So because of this, that is why the National Electrical Code, NEC, you know, apply another safety factor of 1.25. But when you are sizing between the solar charge controller and the battery bank, the safety factor is 1.25. Between the battery and the inverter, it is also 1.25. Between the inverter and your loads, it is also 1.25. So you multiply this 1.25 by the ampacity, by the current that is flowing through the cable. So this is the second factor. Remember that the PV side, it is 1.56. And the reason for this is because of irradiance. The irradiance can increase above 1,000 watts per square meter. And when it happens, the short circuit current that you're using to size um, either your breaker or your cable between the solar panel and you know, your charge controller, your hybrid inverter will also increase. So that is why this one point, another 1.25 multiplied by another 1.25 gives us 1.56. Then the third factor we need to take into consideration is the wire ampacity. The ampacity of a cable is the maximum amount of current a cable can carry continuously, you know, without being damaged, without, you know, being... Uh, uh, without experiencing overheating. So the ampacity of the cable should not be less than the size of your breaker. If your cable, the ampacity, the maximum current it can carry is 80 amps, the size of your breaker should either be 80 amps or less than 80 amps. But the breaker size should not be 100 amps or 125 amps. Why? If the, the main essence of a breaker is to protect your cable so that your cable will not overheat or melt as a result of high current. So if your breaker, the rating of your breaker is higher than the, uh, the ampacity or the, the carrying capacity of your cable, let's assume it is 100 amps. If this current, the current flowing through this cable, this is the cable, the current flowing through this cable exceeds 80 amps. The breaker will not trip. It will wait until the current gets to 100 amps. By that time, your cable is already overheating. Your cable will melt and it can catch or it can lead for, to fire hazards. So that is why your size of breaker should be equal to the ampacity of your cable or less than the carrying capacity of your cable. But when it is done, make it uh, far, far less because it will be tripping unnecessarily. Then the next one is voltage. The voltage of your breaker should be equal to the voltage of your system. That is your system voltage or more than your system voltage. Should be equal to your system voltage or more than your system voltage. Then we have the breaker type. We have AC breakers and DC breakers. So when sizing or choosing breakers, you should know that from solar panel to charge controller, it is DC. Charge controller to battery is DC. Battery to inverter is DC. Then inverter to your load is AC. Why is it AC? Because the inverter has converted the DC to AC. 
So between your inverter output and your load, it is AC breaker that you're using. Then if you're using grid to, you know, power, uh, to, to if you're connecting grid to the inverter, you also use AC. So you should know the type of breaker you're using, whether it is AC or DC. Then the manufacturer limits. Never you size your breaker above the limits of the manufacturer. It is the manufacturer. He knows his device. So you size according to the recommendations. If you look at um, the back of your solar panel, you see maximum um, series fuse rating. You see the maximum uh, size of breaker you should use for an inverter or for a charge controller. So always stay within the manufacturer's limits. So these are the few factors you need to take into consideration. There are other factors, but these are the few factors you need to take into consideration. Now, let us take, for example, this 600 watt panel. So I have a 600 watt Canadian panel, solar panel. It is a monofacial solar panel, not bifacial. So the, when sizing the breaker, what we are using is the current. So the short circuit current, ISC of this solar panel is um is 18.47 amps 18.47 amps this solar panel is 600 watts solar panel so if i have a single solar panel here and i'm connecting it to a solar charge controller what is the maximum size of breaker i should use so we know that the current is 18.47 amps multiplied by the safety factor of 1.56. So this will give us 28.8 uh, amps. This is approximately 30 amps. So this is the size of breaker we will use. It is a single panel. Then from the charge controller, this is the charge controller. From the charge controller to our battery, this is our battery. If, for example, the maximum, uh, the, the rated current of this, you know, charge controllers are rated in current. Let's assume this charge controller is, uh, let's say, 30, I mean, a 45 amps charge controller. If it is 45 amps, this is, SCC and it is 45 amps. So the breaker I will use between the charge controller and the battery will be 45 multiply 1.25. This will give us 56.25 amps. I can use 60 amps breaker because it will be difficult for you to see a breaker that is rated 56. 0.25 amps so i can go for a breaker that is rated 60 amps but mind you the cable you are connecting this breaker to the breaker size should not exceed the opacity of the cable now what if we connect these panels in series or in parallel for the pv side if we have let's say four of them one two three four then we have their positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. And we decide to connect them in series. In series. The current will still remain the same. The short circuit current will still remain 18.47 amps because they are connected in series. Series connection, um, voltage will increase or double, but current will stay the same. But if we decide now to connect these solar panels in parallel, that is positive to positive, negative to negative, all of them in parallel, our short circuit current will be 18.47 amps, 18.47 multiply 1, 2, 3, 4. There are four panels there. So we are having a total short circuit current of 73.88 amps. So our size of cable will be one point multiplied by 1.56. This multiply 1.56. This will give us 115.25 amps. So we can use 120 amps or 125 amps. 
Now you can see the difference that for panels connected in series, 18.47 multiply 1.56. Here we are using approximately 30 amps. For series connection, we are using 30 amps breaker. But when these panels are connected in parallel, you can see the size of breaker we are using, 120 or 125 amps. Why? In parallel connection, current will increase. You are increasing the current. Why voltage will stay the same. So that is why if you are using a hybrid inverter, you know, your size of cable and your size of breaker will not be large because most hybrid inverters, their maximum PV input uh, voltage is 500 volts. So if you have this four or five panels, you can wire all of them in series. And if you wire them in series, their voltage will increase but the current will still remain 18.47 amps. So you are not going to use a large cable, either 4 mm or 6 mm, depending on the distance, to take care of voltage drop. But if you connect in parallel, you're going to use a large cable, and the size of breaker will also be large. So these are the things you take into consideration when sizing a solar power system. If I'm connecting in series, why am I connecting the solar panels in series? What do I want? What, what am I trying to achieve? If I'm connecting in parallel, I have to take into consideration the distance. I have to take into consideration the cable size. Because here, if I use the same cable that I'm using here to connect to this one, this system that is connected, the panels that are connected in parallel, the cable will definitely melt. Unless you're using fake or substandard solar panels. But if you are using the real solar panels that at the peak during the day, the, the panels can even generate more than their rated capacity. That cable will overheat. It can lead to fire hazard. The breaker can trip. It can even burn the breaker. So these things are very important when you are sizing a solar power system. So these are the few things you need to take into consideration when you are you know, sizing your breakers. I also do installations and system design. So if you have on a project, I can handle it for you. Thank you for watching. If you need my PDF on how to size, you know, a solar power system, please check the comments and you get the link on how to download the PDF. It is not free. You have to pay something to support my work. Thank you very much for watching. See you in my next video and do have a lovely day.